On today's episode of Anime Afterthought, a certain scientific railgun, season three, episode 15, Promise. That was such an emotionally devastating episode. We get the truth behind Matori, and it, it hurts. It hurts, and once again, we are left with the realization that Academy City is just a cruel, cruel place for these child espers to even exist. But it does have a, a shiny, happy feeling that hug full of sunshine, make you feel all warm in your tummy kind of endings. That's just, uh, it was a good episode. But before we get into it, before we get into today's afterthought, I have a theory. I've been working on this one for a while and last week's episode, the one of the best episodes I've ever seen in the series, where literally Toma unleashes dragons. He has dragons in his fucking arm. It's beginning to paint a picture of what actually Imagine Breaker could be. So with that, I started to expand upon my theory about what this mystique mysterious power could possibly be. Now, let me preface it by saying that if you've watched any of my episodes, I make it abundantly clear that I am anime only. So the only downside to this theory is my severe lack of, well, general knowledge on the topic. Seeing how the anime has only made it to the end of the Old Testament, we haven't even broken the seal on New Testament and don't even get me started on how far we are away from Genesis. By the way, the naming scheme, oh God, come on, come on. But yeah, that's my only downfall. And I'm, I'm working off a severely, you know, a, a lack of overall knowledge, but I'm, I'm garnering these little bits and pieces of what we've seen so far. I'm trying to make some kind of theory, something that makes sense. And like I said, with last week's episode, we get a pretty big piece of information. So this was all sparked with a comment. I believe one of you stated that there are speculations that there are three entities inside of Toma's arm. And with the help of this comment, this is where I begin to form the basis of my theory. In reality, I actually don't think there are three entities. I only think there are two. Now bear with me. Oh God, here we go. I think Toma, more specifically his arm, is actually a vessel used to seal what we saw at the end of Index 3. You know, his battle with Fiyama, the entity that he had to, you know, overpower with, you know, pure determination and chutzpah. Yes, I think that in reality, this thing is a demon, a devil, a, a god. Who knows to what extent this almost incalculable, you know, being or whatever had to be sealed away. And this is why it's in sealed inside Toma. So Toma is the vessel, but in reality, the seals themselves are the dragons. Now, of course, once again, this is pure speculation, but this actually goes with Imagine Breaker in its base form. See, Toma in itself, his human body being used as a vessel is actually hampering or diminishing the capacity of the dragons. I believe that either when Imagine Breaker is used, a dragon of either the same attribute, which can control whatever he is trying to break, or of an opposite attribute is summon to imagine break whatever's going on, i.e. he has to stop some uh, electricity. Therefore, he would summon either an electric dragon or a, a ground dragon, like either the, the same to control it or the polar opposite to dispel it. I think these dragons are actually performing all of these, these power breaking maneuvers that we have dubbed, you know, imagine breaker. And the reason that there is a limitation is because Tom himself is the vessel in human form with his arm, you know, attached. There is limitations as we see, you know, several times with the series. I believe the first time is when he's trying to fight Stylus's fire. And we see more recently when he's actually taking on Mizuka 5.3. In his base human form, he is unable or doesn't have the power to actually dispel whatever this cosmic entity or power was. But when his arms were severed and the dragons were unleashed in full force, they were out to, you know, come out and they literally just bit this fucker thing to death. Like it, it dispelled it or destroyed it or consumed it or whatever it did to it, it broke this power. Now, the reason it had to use eight dragons, because I'm thinking that seeing how it's a cosmic power above, you know, just your normal base attribute, you know, fire, ice, poison, whatever, it had to use multiple dragons to attach it because a cosmic energy would naturally be multiple attributes or something like that. That's pure speculation on my half. But yeah, I think, I think in all, like something has been sealed away inside Toma, some kind of devastating devil or God or power that needs to be kept from unleashing unleashing God knows what on, you know, the universe. And the only way that they were able to seal it was literally using dragons, these powerful yet still mortal creatures to actually seal it inside of, you know, its vessel. Phew. Okay. So how do you think I did? Because honestly, I was nervous putting this theory out there. I always am kind of nervous, especially with most series, I am anime only. And like I said, I have a limited amount of knowledge on the series itself. So you guys would know if if this 
has already been debunked in an upcoming arc or saga or if I'm hot or cold or yeah, I just, it's just one of those things where I really do like thinking of these theories, but actually putting them in, you know, thoughts to words feels a little bit weird. Wow. I think we're like five minutes in and I haven't even got to the fucking afterthought today. <laughs> so yes, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of this theory? Do you guys have your own theories? Have they expanded upon Imagine Breaker in the series so far? Like I said, uh, watch the spoilers, but you can say hot or cold or, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. How do you do? So yeah. But like I said, let me know in the comments below. And with that, let's get into today's afterthought because wow, it was a very, a very poignant moment in today's episode. We've, we learned something about Matori that we didn't know, but there was an assumption there. There was an assumption because Matori was, it seemed her whole reason was almost to avenge Dolly. Now, like I said, last we left off, we've got, you know, the badass team up between Gunha and Toma once again. Gunha literally lighting the path with his weird fucking powers. Like, I, I still don't know what the fuck's going on with him. It seems if he puts his mind to it, he can literally do fucking anything. Creates an opening for Toma, and he goes in there, and he tries to imagine break it. I mean, he couldn't imagine break it before, but now he tries to do it again, and the results are, well, fucking devastating. It literally shears his fucking arm off right at the fucking socket, but unbeknownst to anyone, especially me, out pops, um, dragons. Yeah, eight fucking dragons in total. And on a side note, I guess on Twitter, their names and attributes were actually leaked. I guess you really can't call it a leak if the person that does it is officially with the series. But yeah, the information is out and the animation itself was <laughs> was surprisingly well done. I got chills as we see this slew of dragons just pop out of this little boy's arm. Like, like eh, fuck it. Which also gives us a flashback into, you know, Toma versus the alchemist, I believe his name was Izzard. And it goes to show you that, wait, maybe it wasn't Izzard's ability to make his illusions become reality. Maybe that was an actual dragon we fucking saw come out of his arm. Like, oh shit. Then rounding out that episode though, we see that Matori has been left alone. Kuroko's memories have been altered. She leaves Matori in the sewer and who happens upon her? It's Misaki. Misaki has, you know, another another mission for the uh, the down and out puppet master. And this is where we pick up today's episode. It's it's very telling. The uh, the information that she was able to get from Gensei when he was incapacitated or down for the count was the fact that Dolly technically isn't dead or is dead, depending on how you look at it. If you view that clones, like Matori says in today's episode, clones are you know actual human beings that each one is individual and special. Then there might be an argument to whether this is the real Dolly or not, but it turns out Dolly is kind of alive, or at least her memories are. See, when Dolly was created, there was actually two of them. There was a quote unquote little sister. Now, before Dolly actually passed away, they decided to transfer her memories to the little sister. So it seems these two are teaming up to go rescue the, quite literally the sleeping beauty. She's literally in one of those uh, hermetically sealed fucking liquid chambers or some shit. Just sleeping the days away, I guess. But in this instance, we get a a flashback into more of Matori, a character who at first was just, you know, pretty one note, but it turns out she's been through some shit. So we see her in the same facility of both Dolly and Misaki. And at this point, she has very limited control of her powers, but this like, a, this is the training facilities that these, these children are going through and well, I mean, technically lab rats. And one day she is actually uh, cornered by one of these researchers and requested to play along with Dolly. And you see their relationship begin to form. Right off the bat, Dolly is completely enamored with this other girl, instantly giving her the nickname of Mi-chan, and just, she's completely like, like a little puppy dog. She is just, you know, elated to have <laughs> a new friend, let alone any friend. Like, itched. she's been here her entire fucking life. Obviously, it's under the presumption of some kind of medical requirements. She's here for operations and treatment and shit, but even Matori is pretty much calling bullshit since the fucking day one. But yeah, but we're a Esper Power Advancement Facility, like this is where you train espers. Like why the fuck would she be here? But lo and behold, she starts playing with her and they, you see this relationship start to form so much so that even not being requested to play with her, Matori still goes there and you know, you know, she's quoted to saying, whenever I put on a smile before, they were always fake just to, you know, put on a front to these researchers to try to get any fucking lean way or advantage I can while I'm here. But every time I was a dolly, every smile was genuine and real. We see her give her the bottle of liquid metal and she's actually 
transforming dolphins. That's what, you know, Dolly wanted Misaki to do when she was under the guise of Matori. You know, in, until that fateful day where, you know, Matori just happens to get off early from her, you know, training and sees Dolly in that very vulnerable state. And she sees only what I can imagine is like several devices hooked up to her chest. Uh, we see a lot of scarring. We... I don't think we see, you know, a fraction of what was actually wrong with her. And she's told the truth. Like, hey, we, this chick's here where she needs medical support. Her treatments are fucking hardcore. But once again, Matori is not putting up with this shit. Like, seriously, what the fuck is going on with her? So she decides to utilize her liquid ability, goes to the vent and steals, steals some information. Now, by the by, th whatever she stole, flash drive files, whatever, uh, it had some pretty big files that she just glossed over. The first one being parameter list. Now, even I know that this is, like the list of espers like you know their potential in academy city i don't know if they've ever expanded what actually is on the list or what the list contains but yeah it's it's a list of you know every esper in academy city as well as their potential probably potential to reach level six and i'm assuming that is used <laughs> used off like a okay so this one's a level four that one's a level two or a level one level zero like let's focus on the higher ups and fuck everyone else below them like it's it's <laughs> I'm assuming it plays a big part in, you know, where funding goes and where attention goes in Academy City when it comes to Esper advancement. But another one is actually the exterior facility. And like, obviously it's judging on where they're gonna put exterior. Now we know exterior from this arc is the genetically modified giant brain used from Misaki's own brain tissue to create, you know, an, her expansive ability for mental out. Like, yes, now it's destroyed, but yeah, it's, it's, it's it's quite telling that they actually they actually put the when I read the subtitles I was like what that's some pretty key fucking uh, information that she's just glossing over but lo and behold she wanted to get to her friend like hey my friend's fucking dying and it turns out yeah it turns out whatever they were doing was making her worse she finds out that Dolly is a clone and she confronts one of the researchers and say hey clones are people too what you're doing is killing her you need to fucking stop and he basically says well fuck you what are you gonna do no one's gonna believe a fucking kid well, that's kind of true you can brush it off as a child's imagination but with the actual physical, you know, data right there. It's pretty damning evidence. Well, you know what? I'll go to the fucking governing board. But Matori is quickly dismissed. Like, dude, who the fuck do you think put all these experiments on? Espers, clones, you're all the fucking same to the governing board, the same to the Academy City. You're nothing but experimental fodder. This fucking sets her off, but of course, nothing good comes from confrontation as she is quickly incapacitated and thrown into a cell. So long fact that it wasn't until Misaki completely took control of this facility, mind raping everyone in the actual uh, skyscraper, and you know, then that's when the guards finally gave up and fucking went home or was under guys and left or whatever, and Matori was finally freed. But she only had one fucking thing on her mind, and that is, you know, revenge. Fucking revenge. Dolly is dead, and it's Academy City's fault, more or less the governing board's fault. And we see well, how she gets placed into that Esper jail, the Esper uh, juvenile retainment facility, whatever it's called. I believe you guys will correct me in the comments. It's because she did a literal terroristic attack on, you know, that impregnable force that we see her sick Mizuka on and her uh, elevated, was it 5.1 when she attacked with a giant lightning bolt? Yeah. She gets taken down, taken to the jail, and this is where, you know, she meets Gensei. But it shows you how fucking manipulated that asshole is. Like, oh yeah, well, I know who you are. I know who Dolly is because I have the information in my brain because it's the stuff that Misaki will eventually steal from me. Oh, I'll just let you know there is another doll that you can go hook up with her and blah 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 no no he has his own machinations his own devious plans to unfurl and this is where you know that fateful partnership is you know created it's a very very telling story like it wasn't it wasn't her she didn't abandon doll it was there was more to it in fact the reason she never returned or couldn't return is because she in fact wanted to help her so much she was willing to give up her station as a valuable test subject as a, a potential esper of high caliber being tested on to try to save her life. She said, fuck this. You're you're not just a clone. You're more than a person. I'm going to save your ass. And, and in doing so, she got captured and literally fucking locked up. And this is, I think, why the ending is so heartwarmingly sad, yet just so fucking jovial. I'm so happy that they decided to end this arc the way they did. Pushing past all, you know, the really nice moments between Team Railgun as they're having a congratulatory meal 
in, you know, this little judgment office. And Kuroko is once again, you know, lecturing Satin on her shadow metal addiction. We're cutting back to Misaki and Mitori as they enter this facility and they rescue, you know, Sleeping Beauty there. Now, like I said, there is part of me thinks that the original Dolly is gone, but there's another part of me that argues if this was just a lifeless body until Dolly's memories and emotions and everything was put in place to her, is she the real Dolly? I mean, it's it's really hard to think about it until you see them actually interact as they open this chamber and she falls out. She instantly recognizes Mi-chan and you have this the same smell and all of a sudden they're just having flashbacks and doing what they used to by one grabbing the nose and one grabbing the cheek. Like it's just so sad as they embrace each other and, and as they're getting to know each other and Misaki is walking away, Dolly is instantly able to recognize, hey, this is Misaki as well. This is the girl that yes, pretended to be Michan, but at the same time was with me when I fucking died, when I kicked the bucket, when I was at my worst. I knew who she was the moment I fucking smelled her, like she is a friend too, and they just have this, oh God, it's just a, such a heartwarming moment. Like I hope Dolly's okay. We do see her kind of like bend over in pain. Is that just like shell shock from her previous memories of always being in pain, or is that new pain we're seeing? Like, uh, does this body have the same weaknesses as the original Dolly? Like, are we gonna have to worry about that shit? We have to take her to Frog Face Doctor to fix her. I have no clue, but just in an all inspiring moment that really lifted up my spirits, you just see them all embrace each other and they're talking about the future. They're talking about the future. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. She goes, Oh, you basically just want to travel the world. And she goes, You know what? If if us three are together, anything we do will be fine. And it was just this very, very heartwarming moment. And then we cut to Mizuka and her own sister, 10032, who is back in action, feeling up, looking good, a little depressed that she missed the Dehase Festival. But let's face it, you were infected with a nanoscopic infection that literally was on track to kill you and literally took down the entire Mizuka network. So, but yeah, even you can see that maybe a uh, Dolly Point little sister is somehow hooked in with the Mizuka network as well because she vaguely has a, a desire to go to the ocean. So, I don't know. I like today's episode. I like today's episode because, first of all, it looked good. Second of all, it felt good. I'm so happy they ended it on a high note. They ended on something fucking happy. Like anyone can just make you feel when they decide to make you feel sad or mad, but being able to empathize with happiness is, is a good feeling. It's a nice pick me up. I love how they ended out Matori's character. I love that they switched it to where it wasn't just pure abandonment out of disgust, quote unquote, but in reality, she was actually trying to save Dolly's life. And in doing so, the only reason she never returned was because she was literally fucking locked up. And I also like how they, like, they twisted in. They just weaved Matori, Dolly, and Misa Saki's story, they just intertwined it so good. Going forward, I don't know. You guys tell me that the, the next arc is pretty badass too. I believe it's called Dream Ranker. Um, yeah, I think I'm still, you know, devastated how about how badass the dragon scene was and how cool of a character Gunha is and all the uh, emotional moments that the series is making me have. <sighs> But yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to this series more than ever. And unfortunately, I literally am staring at my screen and just got a tweet. And unfortunately, episode 16 is being delayed once again to the devastating COVID. And you know what? <sighs> Fuck you, COVID. With all that being said, if you made it this far into the video, I greatly appreciate that. Like I said, let me know about my theory. Is it wrong? Has it already been dismissed and debunked? Uh, do you just hate it? Do you love it? Am I hot? Am I cold? Am I right and I'm wrong? Try to keep me spoiler free. Like you guys are doing an amazing job, especially with a series so dense and thick with lore. You guys really do tiptoe around and you guys, I love it when people put spoiler, do not look below and they put, you know, several spaces there. I think it's like five or six that you need to have. So I, I need, it pops up the, the read more. I love it. I love it. Uh, that allows other people to read it that want to talk about it. And you guys do have a lot of discussions. Like I, I see bits and pieces of it because I try to be wary, but you guys are having full length fucking discussions <laughs> without me. And that's what I love. That's what these videos are more about. It's just to get out there. You have a platform for people to talk about not only the episode, but the series in general. And it being one of my favorite series and more to come, hopefully <laughs> a little bit further around the corner. I honestly cannot wait for future episodes.